I am a recording artist, a radio personality, an actress, a TEDx speaker, and most recently, a certified master life coach. And I am just like you on this wild ride, a page turning book filled with victorious chapters and chapters of sheer defeat. Well, I'm here in the arena now, here to help you create a beautiful life. Hola, mi gente. It's your favorite chica, Judy Torres. Welcome to the podcast, Beautiful Life with Judy Torres. We are now in our third season and we are on fire, honey. If you are just listening and viewing for the first time, thank you so much. I welcome you. And if you've been listening and and following and subscribing and rating and reviewing, I really appreciate it. So I put this podcast together because I noticed that the majority of the fans were sending me messages asking for advice. And then in the last three years, I've been a life coach. So I thought, what better way than to let's do a podcast where we can encourage, inspire, and empower people to live a better, beautiful life. And thus, that's what we're doing now. This episode is going to be so cool for me because growing up, I idolized her. She was one of the queens of disco. You know her for going to get over you. Come to me. Hard to break the heart. Miss France Jolie will be joining us today. Yeah, Judy. So um, it was pretty cool the first time that I got to see you meet France. Many people might not realize that, um, you know, France is a really dear friend of mine and my family and whatnot, and I'd gotten to know her. So when Judy had said to me how much she loved her, I was like, I got to make Judy meet her. This is so amazing. And you'd probably worked <laughs> together in the past, but met each other in passing. But I don't think we ever met each other in passing. Mm -mm, I don't no? think so. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. no, wow. No. So that was like really one of the first times then. I witnessed yeah. people fan out over Judy Torres and I seen Judy Torres fan out over France Jolie and it was pretty cool. <laughs> what is it about the people we look, we look up to, you know? The thing I love about Fred, I mean, vocally, I, I, <laughs> I always make the joke that there are certain singers that will hold a note. You can go to the bathroom, wash your hands, make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, <laughs> come back and they're still singing the note. She's one of those people. And when she sings Hearts Break the Heart and she holds that note forever, for years as a kid, I was trying so hard. I was like, why can't I hold that note as long as her? And uh, to this day, she can still do it. And so I looked up to her vocally for that. And she was also so young. So I kept telling myself, if she can do it, I could do it. And then of course, when I got to meet her, it's really her heart. She has a, a huge, huge space in her heart for compassion. She's very compassionate. She's as real as they come. She speaks her mind and she's a true artist. She really cares about how she sounds when she's up there. Uh, I remember when um, they were rehearsing together for the Westbury show. I remember how you know she took it very seriously. It's like, you're going to come to my hotel room and we're going to work on it and we're going to work. And we kept working and working and, okay, you're going to do this and going to do, and she, you know, it was, it was so much fun to be creative with someone who has the same passion that you do. So, um, it was just like a lifelong dream to not just meet her, but to sit with her and talk with her and then to sing with her. And now today to be able to interview her. Well, there's amazing. a lot of similarities between the both of you. You both started very young. She started 16, you started 17. Mm -hmm. You both are prominent figures in the genre of the music, like in a good way, you're the face of freestyle. She's one of the faces of disco. You know, um, you both have longevity in your careers. You both are for women's empowerment. You both mm -hmm. are proving that age is just a number. And so many decades later, if I could say it, which people would agree, sounding better now than you did on your original records, Hope you, so. <laughs> you, you both are very real when it comes to the way you've struggled with certain things in your lives. And you both are all about overcoming and rising to the occasion with authenticity. So it's kind of interesting that you both wound up gravitating towards each other in this life 
because they it. say we attract people that are like ourselves and you both are very yeah. similar. So it's, it's yeah. going to be a great conversation. And I think that we should most definitely get right to it and save most of the hour for this conversation so people could get the most out of it. As you all may or may not know, growing up, I had a few idols and I idolized these singers because my mom didn't have enough money to give me so I could have voice instruction. I couldn't have no voice lessons. I was so distraught. And all I could do was listen to my favorite singers over and over again. And I used to make believe that they were my voice teachers. One of them was Barbara Streisand. The other one was Donna Summer. And the third one I am proud to say is joining us today on Beautiful Life with Judy Torres podcast, the one and only, the incomparable, the most amazing, and now I can call friends, Miss France Jolie. Hello, France. Hello, 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 hello. How are, How you? are you, my love? I am very good. You? It's so good to see you. I haven't seen you since October. I have to say, I have to say, you look beautiful. Gracias, mommy. You look beautiful. I have a dog. He might be barking oh, through this interview. That's what you, say. you look beautiful. I have a dog that looks like you. <laughs> no, my brain is going 100 miles an hour. I was a whoop, whoop, squir squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> that's all good. Yeah, you look beautiful too. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm so Thank excited you, that, um, you know, I have to, I have to say, this is like a personal thing. The, the, the viewers and listeners, they may or may not care. But the thing is, for me, it's still mind blowing to me that I get to talk to you that like, I'm like, I have Francis number, like we're friends now and we've performed yeah. on stage together. And that's why October was so amazing at the NYCB theater in Westbury, AKA yeah. Westbury music theater. We got to perform together and I was a nervous wreck that night. So was I, I was trying so hard to hold it together because I really wanted to cry. I just really wanted to cry with just like a, a full circle moment. Like my God, as a kid, I was listening to this woman and now I'm on stage with her. I'm singing with her. Oh my God. And, and, and I don't know if you saw when the music started, I don't know if you looked out in the audience, everyone was standing up Oh yeah. and everyone oh, yeah. had their cameras on. It was terrifying. It's like, Oh my God, you feel like an, uh, like an animal in the, in, in the zoo or something, you know, and <laughs> I don't know how to, how to handle that. How did you feel about it? I felt amazing. I, I was a little nervous because we hadn't performed together and we had very little time to uh, to practice. Very little time. Um, very little time. And uh, <laughs> but we pulled it through, I think. And it was uh, it was different for me because it was a freestyle show. Yeah. And for me to get into that realm uh, was a lot different. And I was very insecure because it, it wasn't my niche. Right. I mean, right. I'm because people know you shows. as disco. Right. 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 And I was very insecure backstage. And I was going on, oh, you know, are, are people going to clap when I go in? And, you know, are, am I going to get a reaction? And and so, but but as soon as my name was mentioned and I, I heard the crowd, it, all of a sudden it went like, oh, okay, I'm going to be okay. They loved <laughs> and, you. The freestyle audience evolved from the disco audience. Don't forget, like some of the people mm -hmm. that grew up on freestyle, mm -hmm. their parents raised them on disco. So it's like, it's really cool. Yeah, it's like the passing true. down of the dance generations. It's pretty cool. And then you get to like my <laughs> age bracket being raised on both your music. It was like, forget about it. It's a, it's a score. <laughs> but yeah, you know, awesome. um, uh, that insecurity comes from just being in my niche all the time, right? Like mm -hmm. doing the disco shows. And so, uh, but you know, once I got on stage and I was with you, it was it was such an amazing experience uh, because I know you're the queen of freestyle, baby. Uh -huh. And well, I was sharing the say, stage but, yeah. on I was sharing the stage on your platform, and that made me feel a little vulnerable. But at the same time, I love feeling vulnerable because mm -hmm. all kinds of good stuff comes out of that, right? So, so let's talk about that because. Um, when people hear the word vulnerable, they automatically go to a negative place. And right. I think when you're at a, a stage in life, like you and I are, the word vulnerable actually does the opposite. It becomes something positive. So tell me why Very you powerful, think being vulnerable, actually. right? Tell, tell people why it's okay to be vulnerable. Well, because when you're vulnerable, you're your authentic self. And when you're your authentic self, the most beautiful things comes out. It's the real you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and that's why I call being vulnerable, very powerful. But you have to know how to handle 
vulnerability as well because there's the nerves that come in there's the uh, past experiences that come in so uh, you have to cherish and and embrace that position of vulnerability and once you do and once you understand what it is you become that powerful person and it's all from the heart when, when you talk vulnerability you're talking about the soul for, for the for the viewers and listeners who, who don't know anything about you, let them know how long you've been performing for now. I've been performing for 50, hold on, 55 years. Wow. Yeah. And 55 years. And do you, and, and just this past October, you admit that you, you were, you were nervous. Do you still get nervous at every show or is it just certain shows that you feel the nerves come in? Always nervous. Always feel like going to the bathroom last minute. <laughs> you always do it, right? <laughs> it's true. I don't know. You know, and I think everyone's going to agree with this. Your bladder. Oh, I'm talking number two, baby. Oh, number I'm talking two. number well, two, baby. That's when you're really nervous. <laughs> what a shitty situation. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But right, no, it's, it's like it, there's something mental, like your body knows when you're nervous. It's like, like when you have, when you're driving home, right. And you're like, I have to go to the bathroom, I have to go to the bathroom and you feel it and your stomach is hurting. And then for, for a second, there's like this calm. So then yes. you get out the car, you get your keys. And as you're turning the door to go in, your blood, it goes, Oh my God, I gotta go. Oh now. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. So I know. it's the same way on stage. Like you feel okay until they go, they bring you to the side and you're, you got your mic in your hand. They go, okay, you ready? And you hear them starting to say, coming up next is, and you, and you go, oh my God, I got to pee. I got to go to the bathroom. I got to go to the bathroom, right? <laughs> so, so, so tell me, what do you think the nerves are about like after all these years? Well, for me, nerves are a good sign. It keeps you on your toes. It keeps you a little less, uh, not confident, but a little less, um, full of yourself kind of thing, you know? Uh, it brings you to that, the two feet on the ground, mm -hmm. you know? And and I think nervousness is wonderful before a show because you're on your guard. You, uh, when you're nervous, you're gonna live that, you're gonna give that little extra thing that you need to overcome, you know, this, mm. um, this, uh, you know, nervousness i guess i've gotten the opportunity to stand backstage and witness both of you pre-game right before a show yeah <laughs> and it's amazing in the dressing room loose laughing hanging with some camaraderie of the friends that are on the bill with you guys and then the second you step to that wing right yeah. before you go out there it's like boom poker face boom. you know saturday night you you delivered as you always do and you Thank just you. go out there and you wow the crowd. And Judy, you go out there. You are a pack of energy with these people. And the two focus. of you are so similar on stage in that really? you walk in a room, people wait. Of course, they love to see everybody else on the bill, but there's just certain star quality that they wait for. And when you guys mm. come up, it's like almost like the main event. And I look out and people are instantly transcended back to a time in their life where maybe things were a lot better or maybe it takes mm -hmm. them to a good time or maybe it takes mm -hmm. them to carefree days of innocence. And there's an energy, there's a certain type of aura that comes over them. And then you guys, you could be singing to thousands of people in the audience, but there's always that feeling of you're just singing to that one person. You know, they think right. that you're singing just to them. What is the, like, what is the conversation in your mind before you go out on stage? Do you have a routine? Do you have an affirmation? Is there something that you tell yourself to prep for that second? Cause you know, like you said, the nerves are like, the, the thing about nerves are, I think just as you said, they can be beneficial to you. They, mm -hmm. I think you were trying to say that, that they keep you grounded. They keep you yes. humble. Right. Mm -hmm. Humble. You know, when you're nervous, when for. you're nervous, you know, you know, there's something in you that there's that fear that you might not do a good show. Like, what if I don't do a good show yeah. or, um, uh, you know, costume malfunction? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it, you know, losing your heel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, when you're I mean, there are <laughs> all the things that can go wrong. Things. And now that then they go home, they go home and someone's filming you at the same time now. <laughs> Before they didn't film you, now they're filming you. But do you have some? Do you have a routine that you do to, to kind of like get yourself ready for that moment? I tr uh, well, my moment is when I do my makeup and I do my hair, 
Um, I and I get ready and I put on the nails. <laughs> I don't have them. <laughs> Screw that. Um, uh, but it, it's all that thing where um, it, it's kind of a meditation that I do. Uh, I'm putting on my nails and I could put my nails on with my eyes closed and so so <laughs> is my makeup, right? We're so used mm-hmm. to it. Mm-hmm. So you get into uh, that calmness and it's really hard when you have multiple act shows. It's really hard because I love socializing with the people around me and they come into my room and go, hi, how you doing? <laughs> right? And uh, I sometimes forget about me and do that ritual Mm -hmm. and um but you know uh, yeah it's it's i I say to myself you're you're okay and if something happens you're human let's not forget we're in front of you know thousands of people and you're still human things happen and and if it happens you know deep down judy Judy Torres, <laughs> you know deep down that the crowd is just going to be behind you no matter what happens. Mm. Even if you crack, you can fall, you can whatever. They're going to yeah. be behind you. And that's what I say to myself. They're human just like me. And if I make a mistake, if something happens, I know they'll forgive me and they'll understand and, and all that stuff. So that kind of stuff um, calms me down. Yeah, again, I, I, I become, I, you know authenticity again you know like right. not that superhero that's going to go on stage it's me as you may be you know doing right. my best even if you're not an entertainer when you have something big coming up you know a big meeting a job interview mm-hmm. um some you know so you have to go in and ask your boss for a raise you have to talk to your husband and tell him you're not happy or you know whatever the situation is it's not just about being on stage it's about before you're ready it's to everything. do something scary, what do you do? You know, how yeah, do how do you exactly. get yourself to that point that you you're, you're calm enough that you say, okay, even if I'm scared, I'm gonna do this anyway. It doesn't matter how uh, how you prepare. I believe strongly that things will happen the way they should be happening. Mm-hmm. And there's not that you don't have any control over it. You can prepare and be the best you can be. But if I'm meant to fall on the stage, I will. You know, if it's if it's in my my road for me to experience that, then it will happen. Mm-hmm. You know? Do you understand what I'm of saying? Course. Like almost Of course yeah. I have the same fears you do. I've fallen on stage. At, you know, matter of fact, <laughs> I remember yeah. once I did a show, um, Oh, it was somewhere in Yonkers. It had a funky name to it. I remember saying, it's something monkey. And I remember saying, what? I'm performing where? And um, Faithfully was huge at the time. And so I'm up to my last song and Faithfully's last. And here I go, you know, I'm forever yours, Faithfully. Well, and it, boom, I literally slipped and landed on my tailbone oh, so hard. Me. And then I got up and I just said, hey, this is what you do in life. You fall and you get back up. And that's it. You get back up. It's actually fun. It was actually a really good show. You know, okay, it comes down to this. Sorry, but shit happens. You Mm -hmm. just have to deal the best you can. That's it. So I actually have a question for the both of you because I've heard this answer separately. And now I want to hear you guys speak it to each other. I happen to know the great artistry that is both of you and your audiences love you for those iconic records that you both put out, but there's so much more depth to the artistry, to the vocalist, to the performer. Uh, Do you feel at times that, you know, you'd like to do more musically, but do you feel like that your fans only kind of expect to hear the hits and do you sometimes feel stuck or are you just content? Yes, you're absolutely right. There's more to us, I think, than the records that we put out. Um, I happen to uh, write my own music. I I always been producing, but never uh, they never push that. I have to tell you a story. When I when I went from Prelude to Epic Records, uh, Epic Records was dying for me to do something like Madonna, because you know, and I was mm-hmm. actually being managed by 
uh, the same uh, management company as Madonna. And uh, they were giving me these songs that were actually replicas, almost replicas of, of Madonna. And I had the courage once to say, yeah, but that's Madonna and I'm not Madonna, you know, like, and I remember this guy, not going to say any names. He took that cassette back then and threw it in the garbage. Like he was mad that I was saying, you know, standing up for for myself, right? All this to say is uh, there's so much more to us. And yes, I was labeled as a disco singer. Uh, and it was really, really hard to get away from that. Not that I wanted to, because I always say that I'm very proud to be part of that era because the music was absolutely wonderful music. Um, but I would have loved to cross over and, and be able to do other stuff among uh, 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 at the same time as doing disco, never really get away from it. I didn't have that much opportunity because that label was on me, right? That disco label mm -hmm. was on me. And, uh, and still to this day, people approach me with, like they write songs for me and they approach me and it's all that dance music stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, I can do, I can do more than that. When I have clients yes. that I'm working with for the first time, I say to them, if money was not an obstacle, people is not, people are not an obstacle and time is not an obstacle, right? What would you want to do? So what would, what type of music would you want to do if you had no one telling you what to do? I would do more ballads. Mm -hmm. I would do more R&B stuff because mm -hmm. R&B is my roots. It's, it's, it's in me every time I hear R&B song, I melt. I melt. This is this like gonna get over you that album that the mm -hmm. uh, the album uh, now. Uh, it's probably closest to my roots, and so I would do a lot of R and B. I would do a lot of pop. I would do uh, maybe a little bit of reggae. I love every type of music, and it's it would be hard to do an album with one direction. It would be multiple. It's like going to a restaurant where they can offer all kinds of stuff. I'm a diner. <laughs> I'm a musical diner. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? That's a great you can analogy. Get anything you yeah, want in a diner, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, I I would, uh, and it's funny because lately, Judy, I've been writing a lot, and what comes out is unbelievable. And and when I sit down, I just go, okay, just do something. I mean, last night I wrote a rock song. You know, we have a lot of expressions that are not still um, expressed, so. In all the years that I'm fortunate to know you, um, one of the things that impressed me most with you was the time I was privy to sit next to you in Giuseppe D's studio and watch you come up with what you wanted for Hallelujah. And, right, oh, you know, I remember that. How many people in, in the world could imagine to be able to sit down with somebody as iconic as France Jolie and just listen to her create. And I got to see a whole different side of you that day. And it's probably one of my most favorite encounters with you because you're so in the zone and you were <laughs> sitting there and you were telling him and you were doing the thing with the hands and you were telling him, this is what I want to hear. And he was producing it right in front of you. And what a beautiful track. And then you took it back to Montreal and you added like six more layers of life to it. And then this right. thing gets released and it was so epic and so beautifully done. Thank you know, you. it's that's real artistry, you know? And then oh, of course, when Judy um, got to show me the early stages of Faithfully, I remember visiting her one night at KTU and I listened to it and she's like, listen, I got a little demo of something that I'm doing right now. Uh, it's in the early stages, but I, I want you to hear it. And then to see her beam that it was something other than freestyle and she was yeah. expanding upon her horizon too. It was just a great moment that I can really say, I got to see the artistry in both of you. You know, it, it, it is hard in the music industry in general. When you, when I first started, you know, I thought in my mind, I was gonna be a balladeer. I wanted to be the Latina version of Whitney Houston. That was my vision. Right. And so 
Um, no reason to cry was an accident. You know, no reason to cry wasn't supposed to be my song, but no reason to cry was my first song and didn't know what was going to happen. Then it, it becomes a hit. So now we got to do another song. Then, then, you know, once you have a hit, then they want you to do a second song. That's like the first song, but not the first song. Uh -huh. So then you do come into my arms and they're like, okay, now we're going to do an album. And all I'm, all I'm going is, so can I do the ballads now? Can I do the ballads now? And they're like, no, not yet. You know, we're gonna put like one or two ballads in the album, but but not right now, right? You know, you gotta you gotta make the people happy. So all of a sudden, then you know they were like, what's this music? What is it called? Billboard does a big article. The next thing you know, boom, it's Latin hip hop. Then it's Latin freestyle. Then it's just freestyle. And in the music industry, in the entertainment industry, in the acting industry, once people decide that they like you there is this weird need for the powers that be to label you, slap mm -hmm. you a label on you. And I think that's, that's one of the most dangerous things that people can do in the industry. And they do it in corporate America too. I think in general, labeling things is not exactly a great thing because well, then- it's the, limiting. It's limiting, the, right? Exactly. I think, and um, once you're labeled, Judy, there's expectations. Right. The expectations are a killer. Because yeah. once you want to please your fans, you want to please yourself, and sometimes they're conflicting. Absolutely. And, you know, and I, and I love, you know, I love the way you love being part of the disco era, mm -hmm. being part of that phenomenon. I love being part of the freestyle phenomenon. And it, it's still a phenomenon 40 something years later, we're still 30 something years later, we're still performing oh, yeah. it. For so, sure. you know, and I'm, and I'm always going to be true to that core. And at the same time, I always want people to know that I can do other things. And that's why I had done the one woman show. Cause I wanted to show people like, look, I like musical theater. I like theater. I like, you know, pop. I like other types of music. And when I did faithfully, faithfully uh, was just because, um, you know, freestyle was kind of done on the radio. Radio did no, no longer played it. And I knew I needed something new. And I just felt like you have to reinvent yourself if you're going to stay alive in the game. So I heard faithfully on the radio coming home and I was like, man, that, that would translate really nice into a dance, into a dance track. And I was stalking this um, producer named Valentin and Vic Latino had introduced him to me and said, you got to work with this guy. So I was calling him all the time right. and everything I offered him, he said, no. So finally I called him. I said, Valentin, what about faithfully? He's like, mm. journey's faithfully. I'm like, yeah, journey's faithfully. Um, yeah, no, I don't think so. All right, fine. So then I go to the label, Corey, what about faithfully journeys faithfully? Nah, nah, I'm like, come on. You know, why, 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 why is any of on board? And I could hear it. I was like, everyone's going to sing. Oh, 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 it's going to be amazing. Oh yeah. So like, for sure. I don't know, a week later or something, Valentin calls me and says, ever since you brought it up faithfully, I heard it like five times. I heard it in the supermarket. I heard it in the gym. I heard it in my car. And I don't think that's an accident. So let's do it. I said, well, the label wow. already said, no, he said, that's all right. Let's do it anyway. Let's he was do it. listening. He was so I listening. said, okay, so we did it. And then the label still said no. And then I played it for a KTU and they were like, who is this? I'm like, it's me. And like, that's not you. That's not, that, that is not Judy Torres. I'm like, you, you gotta remember no reason to cry. Judy Torres was 17 years old. Right. You know, right. faithfully Judy Torres is like what, 34, 35. You forgot. were 17. I, I was 17 when I recorded no reason to cry. Wow. So you know, between then and then, I, I would like to think I've learned something with my voice. Hello. And the truth is, Valentin was, a, <laughs> Valentin was an excellent producer. He literally got the best vocal out of me. So it's, it's a yeah. song that I'm really proud of. And uh, that's why I still perform it. Sometimes I perform it in freestyle concerts. And it, sometimes people shake their head like, what is she? What, what is that? What is she doing? But I do it anyway, because I want people Good. to know, like, look, this is part of my repertoire. This is me showing people like I can do other things. Right. And when people tell you no in your life, if you tell yourself, yes, you can make it happen. It's not easy. It's an uphill it's climb easy. all the way, but not eventually easy. all you need is one. Yes. Yeah. You can get a thousand no's all your life. That's all you need right. is one. Yes. And then yes. you're in. That's so right. it took a while, but I got the one. Yes. And then boom. And I, and I, and I Good recorded many other songs after that, mm -hmm. but it never, they never took. So I'm still, and I have other things in, in the works right now. And I'm doing it more for me than for the people and what happens happens. And at the same time, I know I have the, the core freestyle friend freestyle fans. And I think they're older now that they are willing to accept other things that we're willing to do. They will appreciate it, but that's not where they're there for, right? You have something mm -hmm. new to offer and they will listen, but 
the audience is there for a reason, right? Yeah. It's, it's I remember I had a, a, when Faithfully came out, I had a new manager. His name was Gary Salzman. May he rest in peace. And he passed from COVID when COVID first started. But oh. um, one day I said to him, I have a new song. I just want to perform it. You know, I was, you know, when you're on stage with many acts, you know how you're limited. They tell you how many yes. minutes you have on stage. And you're like, look, I just have this new song. Just let me perform this one new song. I'll do the shortest version. And they say, no, no, no. They just want to hear no reason to cry. They just want to hear coming tomorrow. And that's, that's it. Right. That's what they want to hear. And you're like, come on, please give me a break. You know, it's, and it's really, really, really frustrating, but that's what you, you know, that's what you have to do. So it's not like, we don't care. We want to do, we want to show people that we're more than that. But then he had said to me, Judy, at the end of the day, you're selling nostalgia. Absolutely. And I was totally, totally in disagreement with him. And I think about it more and more I'm like, yeah, he's, he's right. right. He's right. He's right. You know, and if it and, wasn't and for people wanting to feel the nostalgia, I wouldn't have a job. So that's right. Or maybe I would. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> that's right. But listen, I mean, we're discussing about our new uh, our new stuff and, and, and what we'd like to do. But it doesn't mean that we don't enjoy what we do. Right. With mm -hmm. the with the your freestyle and my disco. Uh, I, I still love, love going and perform in front of the fans, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, like you were talking about, I think that the, the big theme here today is authenticity is you have yes. to be true to yourself first, despite all these things that, you know, despite all the horrible things that happen in the industry, you're still here and you're still performing Yes, and you still look good and you're still <laughs> you. going. So what is it like, you know, what, what, how do you stay true to yourself? What do you say to yourself? And how are you still able to perform the way you do? Even when in the back of your mind, you knew that, you know, you can do other things. My glass is always, always half full. We are so fortunate. And, and I always said fortunate to be able to do what I love to do as a job. Right. I don't call this a job, but it's still right. a job, mm -hmm. right? I have an income mm -hmm. from it. So I'm, 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 I'm so lucky. And the. I'm going to talk about the fans and I, when I talk about the fans, I get very emotional because the support that these people, yeah, they want to hear disco. I'll give them disco because they have been so loyal. They're still mm -hmm. coming to the shows. They still send me some letters. I still have some fan letters. Um, you know, they're, they're the center of my career more them than I at this point. Do you understand yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It, it's all about giving them love and as as much as I can because they have supported me all this year. So it's a give and take thing. I can't find a better situation for myself than right now. What would you like your legacy to be? I'm going to bring authenticity. I want people to remember me as real, as uh, authentic, honest. Uh, if I don't have anything good to say, I'll shut up. <laughs> uh, you know, Paul Monet said, who's a, a, a fantastic writer, said, the only thing that you have to remember when you're close to that death is how much you've loved mm -hmm. and that's that's what I want to be remembered by is how much I loved what's your favorite word in the language the f word <laughs> <laughs> well that was gonna be my next one what's your what's your favorite curse word F is so for everything <laughs> it's for every i f love you right <laughs> i f hate you i f hate you i i it's like I, when you're it's like growing up i wasn't allowed to curse you know my mom didn't allow in okay. the house and then i went to catholic school so you weren't allowed to curse there either and then i started performing and i just had this thing in my head i can't curse on stage it doesn't look good for a girl and this and this and that wow. and then i got the job right. on the radio and you can't curse because then the fcc will will find you so it's like i just learned i just right. learned this thing that, that not to do it you but i watch people do it, it right? and i'm like man that must feel so good Oh, it feels so good. <laughs> oh, it's, listen, it, it, and, and 
I was managed by my mother when I was very young. Well, not very young, until maybe <laughs> too long. Um, so, <laughs> so my mom was very like, you need to be a doll like, you know, like pretty, perfect, not swearing, good, uh, kind, and mm -hmm. all that stuff, right? And then I met my husband. <laughs> all yeah, you are all that stuff. You just have colorful language with it. It's just good. Exactly, right? But <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but my my I would never use the word before, you know. Did you ever watch the show The Actor Studio? Yes. Okay, so I think John Lipton was the host. Um yes. he passed away unfortunately, but I used to love watching The Actor Studio, specifically because of the questions that he used to ask at the end of it. It was always What's your, favorite, What's your word? favorite word? What's your least favorite word? What's your favorite curse word? Um, What's your favorite sound? Mm -hmm. And what do you hope to ask God or say to God when you're at the pearly gates? Favorite sound is rain. Mm. The rain for me is so peaceful. It's so natural. It's so... Um, so many sounds come from rain, so, like high pitch, uh, low pitch. Hmm. Uh, you know, rain is is actually it's part of my white uh, white, white sounds, noise. Mm -hmm. white noise. Yeah, uh, when I can't sleep, I put I put rain on, and what, it helps me. What would you like to ask God, or what would you like to say to God when you meet Him, Her, the energy force, life source, whatever you want to call? Don't get me started on on religion and stuff. Like no, that. we're not going to talk about religion. I'm just asking. No, 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 no. I know. Have, I know. If you I have know. a chance to ask somebody something, I'm, what would you I'm, ask? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I'm very spiritual, but I'm not uh, religious. So, Got it. Uh, so for me, um, I don't know what awaits for me. But if I have to say something or want to say something to somebody or to something, I would say. Thanks for the experience <laughs> that I've had. Made me a really strong woman. Uh, can I come back as a dog so I can- I was going to ask you, would you like to come back? <laughs> <laughs> but I would want a good owner. <laughs> ah, that's the, that's the trick, isn't it? That's the trick, You have right? to get a good owner. Mm -hmm. um, no, actually, if I, if I were to, um, I would want to come back as- as a singer, but in a different time and a different um, being able to express what I didn't have a chance to express in this lifetime. Excellent. That's a great answer. Yeah, yeah that's deep. What do you both feel is the secret to the longevity of the great careers you have had aside from the music and aside from the authenticity? I just think that every generation has the music that captures the time that reflects our youth. And as soon as you hear any song, it automatically transports you back to a time when. You remember when you hear a song, if you broke up with somebody, uh, when you moved that year, when you graduated from school, you remember music for that reason. So I think one of the reasons it's lasted this long is because of that. It's, sorry to cut you off. Mm -hmm. Why did you last so long? I think that's what, that's what Vinny was asking. It's different. We're not talking about the music. Why We're did talking about I last you. so long? Yeah. I don't know. And um, he said no authenticity. I word. think because I, I think because I love it so much. That was my, I, I my, hope it's because too. people can tell that I just love being up there. Like every time I'm up there, it's like my dream has come true. And I, and I celebrate that. So I hope that's part of the reason. You and said it you? so well, honey. No, I can't. <laughs> I, you know, ditto. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> exactly what she it's, said. It's it's the same. It's the same thing. And uh, yeah, I, there's nothing I can add to that because you were right on. It's uh, it's a, a beautiful description of how I feel as well. I think it's nourishment for us. I think it's something that we don't have a choice. We need. It's a need. It's it's essential, and. Mm -hmm. I, I remember during COVID um, that I really enjoyed the time off. I have to say, oh, 
wearing my slippers every day, no makeup, no nails, no wig, no <laughs> heels. Uh, you know, it was heaven for a while. But after that, wow, when that time was over where you say, oh, I'm, I'm rested. I could go back now. And it was a lot longer than we uh, anticipated. Um, it was hard. Yeah. It was hard for so many people, never mind us, you know, mm -hmm. like it's hard because Everybody. we're not on stage and everything, but it's part of our nourishment, right? It's part of, of like you said, it's it's like breathing. And um, I had a hard time breathing at times. No one yeah. really thought it would last that long. The gift of COVID was I'm in the present moment. I was not in the past or the future. And... I've learned a lot. I think it's probably one of the events in my life where I learned the most. You could have looked at it as the worst thing that ever happened to us and you could look at it as an amazing divine opportunity Absolutely. to learn something and come out on the other side, a different yeah. person, more positive, you know? For some reason, it's human nature to want to avoid pain. Yes. For whatever Absolutely. reason, we don't want to feel the pain. We want to feel joy. We want to feel a celebration. We want to feel laughter. We don't want to feel joy. We want, we don't want to feel uncertainty, all those things. So we do something to escape that, whether we drink too much, we work too much, we have too much sex, we gamble, we eat too much. Um, there's lots of things, you know, yeah. we, but, but the, the main thing is to avoid and to self-medicate and it doesn't work because yeah, those you think it works and it somewhere. does work it works it for, does a moment, work for a little bit, for a moment for a little bit yeah. but when it's all said and done you still have the problem there now you have another problem it's right. probably the other problem now is addiction or the other problem is that you're behind in everything because you were putting everything off so um, but i have to tell you judy i have another spin on this okay my addiction saved my ass Okay. Because if I wouldn't have had that addiction when I did, I wouldn't have survived. You also have to look at this way. Addictions are there for a reason. And, you know, when, when you talk about somebody who's being um, abused uh, in every way and they have multiple personalities, it's because they can't handle it. Oh, that's a coping so, it's a coping thing yeah it's a coping mm -hmm. thing right so they can't yeah they have to to cope somehow and they as one person they can't cope and so but it's the same thing with addiction uh it saved a lot of people's lives also it it, it did ruin some lives i'm not saying addiction mm -hmm. is good but i look at it from now i'm okay i'm not you know, I'm I'm a I actually I'm a recovering uh, gambler. I was gambling for many many years, and uh, but it saved my life when it was there, when when I was in it. Okay, it saved some somehow it saved my life. Hmm. Most of the time when we talk addiction, we usually talk someone hitting rock bottom, and that that's when yeah. you decide to stop. So, did you have a rock bottom moment? Oh, absolutely. Uh, when, when I was uh, spending like crazy and I had, I had won, uh, uh, quite a bit of money in one night and instead of, of course, I'm ad addicted to gambling. So that money I should have kept, right. But I, so much money went into the next day, um, in two days, my money was gone mm. and I had won quite a bit. And, um, and when I saw that I, and, and I was so happy to win. And then the next day, you know, losing it all was so, such self-destruction. Uh, I, I, I guess I wanted to feel the pain. I don't know. It's sometimes you need to lose because you want the high of winning again. And it's crazy. It's crazy. Mm. And, um, that day I, wanted to take my car into a bridge and go over it with my car. It, it happened. It, it Not it happened, but it was there and I was on the premises. Mm. And for some reason, 
there's a a, a light that came a, a a sensation of I can't end this now I don't know why but I was very very close I was there and um, and my husband didn't know and so I took my car and I became all of a sudden I became brave I don't know it, it was out of the ordinary like something happened where I took my car I went back home and I admitted to my husband that I had that, that problem and that I had lost so much money and uh, and that same night I went to a AA meeting like not a AA, GA meeting Gamblers Anonymous mm -hmm. and after three meetings I said this is not enough for me I never went back to play but after those three meetings I said it's not going to cut it once a week. I need help. And I uh, I went to rehab. I went to uh, to a place where I was uh, in intern uh, for 30, 32 days or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I've been sober ever since, sober from gambling, I mean. That's great. Yeah. Did you learn why the addiction was there? Like, what was it that you were, what, what was the feeling you were going after or the thing you were trying to avoid? I felt, I don't know if it's the word repressed all my life. Like not, I never felt liberty mm. because I started being in show business for so, for, you know, at a young age, uh, my mother being my manager, which was at times so hard because I was with her all the time and she was so into my career that she forgot how to... Um, Just be mom. Yeah, you know? And so, yeah, I was flying away from, from that. And when I was alone gambling, I had control. Or so you thought. Happened. Oh, so I thought. My <laughs> yes. Because it's but, so not in your control, the gambling thing. You're hoping, you know, it's about your stakes and your possibilities. The, and exactly. And it's the mm -hmm. hope. It's the gambling is all about the hope of winning, right? And that's a rush. And you if you have your... people watching and they're cheering you on, that's got to be a rush too. Oh, yeah. It's a I form of validation. To, I used to be at the casino for many two days and not eating and not just being in that mm -hmm. it was just consuming so much you know consuming me mm -hmm. and uh but i there's there's a freedom that comes with that and it's hard to understand because they're contradicting but i was in my bubble and i was just doing me do you understand mm -hmm. yes i yeah. do yeah i get and, that and uh and of course it was self-destructive and you know I, I finally got some help but that's when i say before addiction has a positive aspect and not that you should be addictive people do what they back. do because there's a payoff you know and the, i think the payoff yeah. from addiction is the momentary feeling of the pain not being there if i didn't have that addiction i don't think i'd be on earth right now hmm. do you understand like it saved me in some way hmm. Did it save you or did it, did it just give you extra time? It saved me. Okay. I have so, to say it saved So in me. what way do you feel it, it saved you for people that might be watching that are struggling with maybe the yeah, same thing? Yeah, because when you hear, you know, we, we, all, we always hear the word addiction and we just think that it's just a negative thing, period. That's right. But there's nothing negative about anything. There's always something to gain about bad experiences, about addiction, about abuse about mm -hmm. there's a reason why you go through that mm -hmm. and it saved me Vinny it, it basically saved me because I would have done something drastic I found something to save my life but um, there's better ways to go about it right you you can do something very um, uh, non-destructive but you know you see what I say I let everybody know everybody has a story and if we just took the time to listen 
Yeah. We learn something, number one, that we never knew. Like I never knew this about you. So thank you for sharing. And number two, we realize we're not alone. Everyone suffers to some extent. Some of us more than others, some of us in different capacities and others, but nobody escapes this world without some type of trauma, incident, yeah. death, betrayal, sickness, um, you name it, you know, that's part of the human yeah. experience, you know. And you'd well, probably be more most? blessed to grab back your own problem after seeing somebody else's problem because mm. you know you were able to to handle it and how you came out on the other side of it. Yeah. 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 Well, friends, thank you so much for your honesty. I don't want this to end. For your authenticity. <laughs> so we don't, we don't, we don't. I mean, you want to talk about something else? We want to talk about <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, I just feel very privileged to be able to talk to you, Judy, because I look up to you so much. Uh, the things that you have achieved in your life, and it's making me all emotional right now. Um, the things that you've done with your life is, is um, it's genius. You're, you're, uh, you're, you're so, like I said, my favorite word, authentic. You are real. You look at things dead on. And from what I know about you, I don't know all your life, but I know a little bit. We shared a few things <laughs> together that you come out of, of every situation as a winner. Do you understand? Like a winner doesn't mean a winner, but a stronger more powerful woman and uh, the things you achieved as as far as especially your one woman show I cried so much when I went there <laughs> I remember what you told me when you were leaving I uh, shares me in tears too <laughs> yeah I remember what she told me friends friends took me to the side she was you know she was leaving the show was over and she said come here I have to tell you something I have to tell you something and <laughs> you pulled me to the side and you whispered in your ear in my ear and you said don't effing ever stop doing this <laughs> yeah yeah and you See, were like even you were then she dropped the f-bomb <laughs> she did she's like she's like you were meant Woo! to do this you yes. need to keep doing this don't stop doing this and i was just touched don't so, let so touched. anybody tell you that you can't do this yeah right absolutely and and, and it's wonderful when you the... when you get the support from other people especially it was like such a joy like at the time I didn't know you really well and I just wanted you yeah. to come to the show because I, I I wanted you to know what you and your music meant to me I right. wanted you to know that you were part of my life story and you didn't even know it you know right and so to be on stage and to talk about that and to know that you were in the audience was just like psh, like like my <laughs> head just blew up you know and uh it was just it's just it's wonderful to hear uh, especially when other women support other women. And it's just, oh, you've just been a blessing in my something... life from day oh, one. Thank you. Yeah. And, you know, um, when I didn't know you and I was part of your life somehow, now you are part of mine and you're bringing me so much, so much you're bringing me. And I appreciate our friendship. I appreciate your talent and your, you know, when I look at you, the first word that comes to mind is courage. I find you so courageous. You know, I mean, you, you, you became by, you know, being a singer and then you went into radio and then you went into on, on, on to doing a one woman show. Uh, you kept on recording the things that felt right to you the strength and courage and and um you're a really good example for the young women that are coming up and i hope that everybody takes a chance to listen to your podcast because you have a lot to say and we have a lot to learn from you and mm -hmm. i i thank you for being in that platform thank you ladies and gentlemen the one and only my girl my <laughs> friend france jolie thank you so much <laughs> I thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me on your show. I You're never welcome. thought I was going to talk about deep stuff like that. But you know what? That's that's what Judy's that's what I want podcast, the podcast is. to be about. And um, this is what I wanted to. You be know about. what, France? You really you have a beautiful life, and that's what Judy's podcast is called. And it's 
it's awesome to see how you maintain a beautiful life even after all that you went through and it's yeah, it's inspiring exactly. for people that watch this particularly yeah. you see their idols you're, inc you're incredibly resilient friends incredibly oh, resilient you. and you know when i sat down with you when we were practicing it's clear to me that you're an artist in the true form of the word you know oh. artists are sensitive artists are compassionate artists are empathic but they also know exactly what they want and they're determined that nothing takes them down. Yeah. And it is such a pleasure to be in the arena of music with you. And I know that today, I know you read and you probably inspired a lot of people to turn their lives around today. I love you. Yeah, love you, bye-bye. Bye, Vinny. Love you, bye-bye. Love, love, love you, bye-bye. <laughs> You're gonna do that, you. right? I'll, I'll text you. <laughs> wow, talk about a conversation that went in so many different directions. When you get along with someone, when you're comfortable, and when you're being authentic, the conversation can go on forever, literally forever. And I really want to thank her for being as authentic as they come, not just saying it, but walking the talk. And um, I will forever look up to her. I can't wait to go to visit her in Canada. And I just know that today that the things that she said, I know that people will find strength from that. Now, I know her answer um, is going to get over you the, of her catalog, you know, the, the, the famous songs, that's her favorite. And I know your right. answer, but I want you to tell the people rather than me say it <laughs> of her catalog. What's your favorite? Hearts break the heart, baby. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and it's all because of that one long note. And if you right. guys don't know what I'm talking about. We should actually play that song, but Hard to break the heart. Just listen to the beginning. It starts out really slow. And she goes like sudden, three different octaves in it. Too. There is this one you have note the heart that she to break just this heart. lonely heart. Yeah. Yeah. Break this lonely heart. And she just keeps on going. See, I stopped and she still keeps going. <laughs> it's fantastic. I didn't take a breath, but now I know I had to do it. I have to take a big breath, but um. Yeah, what a, what a phenomenal song and phenomenal voice. And everyone loves her music. And um, she's just a, a wonderful woman. And people need to take the time to get to know her. So I'm glad we were able to do that today. So I was privy and fortunate enough to be at to see to experience uh, Judy Torres, the one woman show. And I got to see, um, first of all, my friend, the artist, talk about the profound impact that France Jolie is on her life. But it's also pretty cool that people got to realize the little girl that got to see her idol and get to become friends with her idol and talk about her idol. So what did the little girl inside of you feel today being able to have her on your podcast? <laughs> that, <laughs> that's what the little girl did. She just squealed with delight. She's so, just so happy. Um, it really is um, one of those, what do they call them? 360 moments, you know, where your life, it feels like everything connected. You know, many people don't get to meet their idol. So to not just to meet her, to sing with her, to practice with her, to have, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one major conversations with her and then to have her on the podcast. It's just, uh, you know, I can die a happy woman. That's all I have to say. It's, it's just wonderful. And I think, you know, I encourage people out there to, if you know someone had an effect on your life in a positive way and you never told them thank you, you need to tell them thank you. You need to give them a call, write them a letter, send an email, post something positive on, on social, do something to let them know because sometimes people have no idea that they're leaving a positive effect on other people and they think that they're not very worthy. So I think it's important to let the people know. You love them, you care about them, you appreciate them. And because of them, you're a better person today. Thank you, Judy. I love you. I appreciate you. I am a better you're person welcome. because of you. I tell you that all the time, though. You know that. <laughs> so final thoughts, my friend. Final thoughts. Those were the final thoughts. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my God. I, I love France Jolie. Believe in yourself. Be authentic. People will tell you in your life that you can't do anything. They want to put a label on you. They want to put you in a cute little box. You don't have to stay in the box. You be who you are. That's the most important message of this whole uh, episode be who you are do you who you want to be what you want to do if you don't do that in this life you are not fulfilling your purpose god's given plan for you is for you to have a purpose your job is to figure out what that purpose is and then to go live it out to the fullest bam that's it 
And of course, we thank her for her <laughs> uh, candidacy and for opening up about her struggle with gambling addiction. So if Absolutely. you or anyone you know is struggling, the number and the information on your screen right now will most definitely be some sort of aid and assistance. Remember that life is always changing and your current situation and their current situation can change and can always change for the better. And you can get back that beautiful life that you so rightfully deserve. And you cannot change what you do not acknowledge. So you want to change something, you first have to acknowledge it. You have to say, I have a problem. I want to change. Whether that's addiction or anything else, you just have to say, I want to change. I'm ready to do better. Because once you know better, you do better. And if you want to be on an episode or have a topic for discussion, Judy Torres, life coach at gmail.com. Be sure to subscribe, to like, to share, and to participate in all of the shenanigans of this great <laughs> podcast, share it with your friends and your loved ones. And we'll see you on the next episode. On that note, thank you so much for tuning in. Okay. I love you. Bye-bye. There's no reason to cry. Mwah.